the Lord a shout if you love him. Amen. You know, I like being around people who love Jesus. Amen. You know, how many how many of you ever getting around people that, you know, love a lot of other things, but not Jesus? And, uh, man, there's people who love all kinds of things in the world, and they get crazy. But you know what? We can get crazy for the Lord. Amen. You know, the Bible says that he who loves much, or he who has been forgiven much, loves much. Amen. And I love the Lord so much because of what he's done in my life. And it's exciting to be here. I know that God is moving. We want to just give a shout out to everybody who's uh, watching today online. Amen. We want to uh, uh, also welcome, amen, uh, the churches uh, from India that uh, uh, Pastor uh, Raju, amen, uh, is leading. And they, they catch up with us every Sunday. Amen. So here it's Sunday morning in India, it's almost midnight. Amen. And so uh, praise God. It's a little bit of a time difference, but praise God. Welcome to everybody. Amen. Give a shout out online and uh, give the Lord all the praise. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn with me to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Amen. Don't forget right after service, they had some wonderful, uh, 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 you know, we're doing some fundraisers and uh, they had a yogurt, you know, fruit things. Amen. They were pretty as can be. Amen. I mean, I didn't even want to try to eat one. It was so pretty, but uh, they still have leftovers, so right after service, if you want to grab you one uh, before you head out, amen, uh, just help with the fundraiser. I forget how much they are. They're three do- uh, $20, amen, Tw- uh, <laughs> $3, amen, look at that, what a deal. They were 20 but we're going to put them on sale for three for you today, amen, um, praise God. You know, I started a message on a Wednesday night on uh, Kingdom Minded. I'm going to be preaching on this here for the next uh, probably a month or so, uh, about being kingdom-minded. And the, the thought about being kingdom-minded is an understanding that there are two kingdoms uh, on this world that you and I live in. We live in this world, and there are two kingdoms, the Bible says. One is the kingdom of darkness, and the other is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of darkness kind of rules over the world, and this is where we get words from the Bible like being worldly, to be worldly, to be worldly minded, to be influenced by the world, to be conformed to the world. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you are raised in a place in certain ways, you take on that way of thinking. You see the world through those lenses. So I've been all over the world. I've had the privilege, amen, to preach in different places, whether it's been in Europe or Africa or Central America, amen. Um, uh, I've had this opportunity to go. And what I've noticed is not everybody sees the world the same as us Americans. We have our own unique way of seeing the world, but also I have been around a lot of different families. How many know not every family sees the world the same way? Amen. And uh, so we all have the way of seeing the world. We now, though, if you have come to Christ and you belong to the Lord, the Bible says, amen, that you are no longer of this world. You live in it, but you're no longer of it. We're of the kingdom of God. And one of the things I want to challenge you in this uh, series is quit thinking like a Christian. Let me explain that. Christianity has a certain way of thinking. I'll give you the examples. I'm a Christian. I think this way. I'm saved. I belong to God. One day I'm going to heaven. I go to my church. I'm involved in ministry. Okay? How many can agree with that kind of a thinking as a Christian? Right? But you see, Christian thinking, when you think as a Christian only, It's very self-centered. It's about me. It's about my walk with God, everything. And you'll hear people say this all the time. Well, you know, whatever you believe is up to you. I believe the way I believe. Listen, let me tell you something. You can believe and I can believe whatever we want to believe, but that doesn't make it truth. 
The question is, what does God believe? What does the Word of God say? The Word of God is not complicated. The Word of God, amen. And His Word, He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He rules over the kingdom of heaven, which we also call the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is ruled by the Lord, and He says, this is truth. And then he wants me to see as he sees. This is the great journey that you have in growing in Christ. First of all, people make the first step in their faith. When you come to God, you have to be a believer. Here's the great thing. God says, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get your act all together. But you do have to believe right. You have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He was born on this earth of a virgin, that He did what the Bible says He did, which was miracles, signs, and wonders in a ministry, that He actually died on the cross for the sins of mankind, and you have to believe that He rose from the dead and is coming back. If you can believe that, the Bible says, that is called faith, and that is is then when you repent of your sins and you're cleansed. And so people become Christians or followers of God by believing in Jesus. But do you know not everyone who believes in Jesus believes the same? Because most people will believe in Jesus but they have not grown in a personal relationship with the Lord and been discipled enough to believe like Jesus. See, that's what discipleship is. It's where you and I grow in relationship with the Word of God. We learn the Word, we're discipled, and we begin to believe like Jesus. Because there's a lot of people who believe in Jesus, but they don't believe like Him yet. I'll give you a simple example. How many know not everybody believes the same about forgiveness? Let's talk about forgiving others. Okay? So some people think, well, you know, if they're really sorry and they do a great job of, you know, apologizing, then I will forgive them. And all the wives said amen. <laughs> Husbands have always tried to figure out, how do I get them to forgive me, man? I mean, you know... Just say, be like Jesus, honey. <laughs> so not everybody believes in forgiveness the same. The question is not, do I believe that someone deserves to be forgiven or not? The question is, how does Jesus believe about forgiveness? So the example was Peter. Peter said, Jesus, should I forgive my brother seven times in a day if, if he does me wrong? He was being very generous. I mean, if my brother does something against me seven times in the same day, I should forgive him, right? And Jesus looked at him and says, uh, I believe a little different. Let's try 70 times seven. What? <laughs> so Jesus believes this about, I'll give you an example about forgiveness. He says we're to forgive even our enemies. Those who have spitefully used us. In fact, he believes that if we don't forgive others, we cannot be forgiven ourselves. Now, that's pretty extreme, isn't it? So you see how you can believe in Jesus but not yet believe like him? That's the, the, the journey of growing in Christ. Is not, I, my journey is not just to get to heaven. My journey is to become more like my Savior. I want, he's kingdom-minded. Jesus understood the kingdom of God. In fact, this was what was spoken about. I want to just give you this here in, in uh, Matthew chapter 3 very quickly. So in Matthew chapter 3, beginning in verse 1 and 2, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of uh, Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When you look at the scriptures in the book of all the New Testament, you're going to find the word Christian used, I think, three times. 
But yet the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is used hundreds of times. Because he said, as you go, preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. But what are we preaching? The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, and this is what we've got to... We, We've got to begin to get this truth in us, amen, that we are a part of the kingdom. Let me read you in Colossians chapter 1, amen, verse 13 and 14. So this is what Jesus did on the cross for us. It says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness, the domain, the kingdom of darkness, and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> when you placed your faith in Jesus Christ, when you and I came and repented of our sins, His blood forgave us and He took us out of the domain or the dominion of darkness and He conveyed us, He translated us into the, the kingdom of God of His Son, Jesus Christ. So He's saying... You're no longer under this kingdom. You're no longer ruled by the kingdom of darkness. You're no longer going to think like they do in the kingdom of darkness. You and I need to learn how to think and to see and to be kingdom minded. So kingdom minded. This is where you need to pray. Lord, I don't want to be conformed back to this world but transform me by the renewing of my mind. Transform me by the renewing of my mind, Lord God. Give me your thoughts and your ways. Because the scripture says in Isaiah, God's ways and thoughts are greater than ours. <coughs> Excuse me. As high as the heavens are above the earth, amen, so is God's ways and thoughts higher than ours. Don't get into a bunch of arguments with your brothers and sisters. You know, we're always arguing about beliefs. How many know an adult believes a little differently than a five-year-old? Now, as an adult, I don't go to my kids and say, listen, you need to understand about compound interest. You need to quit wasting your dollars on that candy. You need to start preparing now for retirement. How many know the kid's going to look at you like, I just want some candy, Dad. They believe differently, don't they? As believers in Christ, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. How long you're saved does not determine your spiritual maturity. It's how much you've invested in talking to the Lord and being in His Word that will determine spiritual maturity. So we don't argue over a lot of things. So many Christians are all about arguing and arguing about this and that. What, listen, the, the adult doesn't argue with the child about adult issues. But we do gently instruct truth, don't we? And that's all that we want, God wants us to do. He wants us to lovingly instruct truth. And so you know the Word of God says... And we bring out the Word of God. So for anybody who's on Facebook, don't get sucked into all those arguments. Amen. It, it, you, do you know, I, I, I never got this. I still don't get this, okay? I'm from old school. We had authority. In my school, you never lift off a teacher. Because if you did, they'd send you to the principal's office and they'd spank your butt with a paddle. How many ever got a, a paddling in school? I got it every year until... The 10th grade was my last year. Finally, in 11th to 12th grade, I grew up, you know, and I didn't get any more pavlins. Amen? But they worked. But I've never understood this when a parent argues with a child. You don't argue. Amen. You instruct. You train. Amen. There was one time I was, I was in a circumstance with some uh, 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 adults, and, and the kids were trying to argue about what everybody was going to do, and I just said, stop. This is, not, this is not your argument. This is not your place. Be quiet. The adults are talking. Amen. 
There, there's certain things that we have to understand. And so in the kingdom, don't get online on Facebook and start arguing with everybody because a lot of times all you're doing is arguing with kids. Spiritual, immature Christians. Amen. And we've got to be gentle with one another. We've got to be gentle with each other. Praise God. Don't get into it because there, here's, here is kingdom-mindedness. Here's the thinking of the Lord. Paul even wrote, he says, he says, do everything without arguing and complaining. Amen. Some people go, well, what am I going to do on Facebook then? <laughs> I can't argue and complain. What am I going to do? <laughs> But being kingdom-minded. So I want to I help you understand something as we jump into this. How God, the Lord, has taken us from the kingdom of darkness, the, dom the domain of darkness, and He's transferred us, He's conveyed us into the kingdom of, of God. And what He's doing is He's saying, in the kingdom, there's joy. In the kingdom, there's peace. In the kingdom, there's grace. In the kingdom, there's there's power. In the kingdom, there's healing. In the kingdom, there's forgiveness. These are the ways of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. But in the world, there's jealousy. In the world, there's confusion. In the world, there's anger. In the world, there's envy. In the world, there's fear. In the world, there's discouragement. In the world, there's depression. In the world, there's sickness. Where do you want to live? I mean, when I describe those two, where, where, where do you want to be? I, I don't want to be in the, in the world. Now, here's the thing, is we have been conveyed into the kingdom of God, but until we are finally united with Christ in eternity... We live on this earth. And Jesus said, on the earth, in the world, there will be tribulation. He didn't say, for all you Christians, you will never have to go through another hard thing again. No. He warned us. He said, in the world, there's going to be tribulation. But in me, you'll have peace. Which means you can be in the middle of a storm and have peace. Peace. This is, this is what we're living in. Amen. And so we now, as believers in Christ, we need to know that we can receive everything that comes from the kingdom of God. On Wednesday night, I talked about your position. So here's some of the thoughts that we get from that. He says, uh, number one, you are ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador, that's a high rank that God has given you. He says you are called citizens of of heaven. That's my citizenship. It's nice. You know, it's funny how Americans are. I, I've been all over the world, and Americans are kind of like, hey, uh, I'm an American, you know. Well, you happen to be, you know, in, 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 in this nation, and we have different laws, but I'm an American. You know, we just think that we can imply our American rule everywhere, but it doesn't work that way, amen. You know, if you don't believe that, go to Mexico and get pulled over by their police. Hey Amen. You better have, you know, $20 to give them or you're going you're gonna to be in trouble. I know. Hey Amen. I'm like, just give the dude 20 bucks. Hey Amen. I went in one time and, and, and my, my passport, I, they didn't catch it at the airport. I get into Mexico and, and the guy says, you know, me and my wife are there. And he goes, oh, her passport is uh, good, but your passport expired. You have to go. I said, she can stay, but you got to go. I said, no, she ain't, she's staying with me. And I said, uh, I don't want to go. You know, he goes, but your passport's expired. I said, well, can you help us? <laughs> yeah, I can help you. He said, uh, you see that guy right there? Uh-huh. He said, I'm going to send you over there. Just make sure you give him a tip. So I pulled out a $20 bill. I said, is this good? He goes, yep, that's good. Went over there, gave him my 20 and praise God, I got into Mexico. Praise God. But you know how many know in America that ain't working that way? You say, hey, you know, my, your passport's expired, sir. You can't come in. Hey, here's, here you go. Next thing you know, man, you're like arrested, you know, for trying to bribe an official. <laughs> there are different ways of doing things in the world. But 
because you are a citizen of heaven, you get to have the laws and the power and the anointing of heaven in your life on this earth. Amen. So, thank God, the earth and the world has doctors. If I need an operation and I get prayed for and I don't get a miracle, I don't mind them giving me an operation. But I'm going to be praying for a miracle to the last second. Amen. I'll be telling the doctor, check again, check again, check again, doc. Amen. But because I'm a citizen of heaven, I can seek the miracle of God and the healing of the Lord. Amen. What am I trying to do? How many have ever prayed the Lord's Prayer? What does it start off with? Our Father, our Father, He's our Father. We have relationship. Otherwise, He's saying, You have relationship with this God, my Father, which gives us not only am I a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, I'm a child of the king. I'm surprised how many people can say that, our Father which art in heaven, don't even get a, 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 what it means. I'm a child of the king. And my Father is in heaven. That's his throne. That's his kingdom. And what do I pray? Thy will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. So what do we do? We're praying. Lord, we want your kingdom to come. What is the kingdom? There's healing in the kingdom. There's forgiveness in the kingdom. There's joy in the kingdom. There's grace in the kingdom. There's love in the kingdom. Amen. There, there's power in the kingdom. So what the world doesn't offer you, guess what? Don't worry about it. Because you now belong to the kingdom. You're, you're an ambassador in the kingdom. You're a citizen of the kingdom. You're a child of the kingdom. And the Bible even says you're a priest unto God. We are holy priests in the kingdom. Man, I'm telling you, the Lord has made us something special. This is, this is in the kingdom. And we don't need, in this world... How many know the world will fill you with a lot of stuff? And that's what I want to talk a little bit about. Holy Spirit filled. Kingdom minded is understanding the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of the Godhead. The Spirit of God himself is filled. He fills me. He fills me. He, we, we, we get baptized in the Spirit. We get filled with the Spirit. But I want you to think about being filled. In Matthew 3, verse 11 John the Baptist said this about Jesus, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit and fire. He gives us this promise. In fact, Jesus, on the day that he's going to be lifted into heaven, in Acts chapter 1, he's about to ascend into heaven. Listen to what he says, the very last sentences he says to them. Now, how many know that if you're about to leave earth and you're leaving all of your followers who are now going to carry on, you're probably going to tell them something very important, don't you? He's not going to say, hey, guys, hey, y'all remember that fishing trip we did? That was a blast, wasn't it? Hey, I got to go. See ya. That wasn't it. Amen. He's about to leave them. So he's, he's given them the most important instructions. And he says this. I'm going to read you a few verses in Acts 1, 4, 5, and 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You've heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. He says, listen, here you, you, I'm leaving, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to send you the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. How many, let's be honest, as Christians, we still struggle with worldliness? I pray all the time, God, cleanse my mind. Cleanse my mind. I thank God nobody can read my mind. Listen, it's not like it used to be, I'll tell you that. But there's still things that go in my mind, I'm like, what the heck? 
It's like, get out, get out of there, man. <laughs> what, do, what do you think in that way? You know, you get, you get angry. You want to beat somebody up. I'm like, Lord, that's not me anymore. I don't do that stuff anymore, you know. I want to get, you know, whatever you, uh, uh, you want to cheat somebody or you want to, you know, I was in the store the other day and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm checking out and I got things underneath the basket and I said, uh, I tell the guy, I said, I've got, I got two cases of water under here. He says, okay. And so we start doing it and everything and he, he rings it up and he goes, that's it. And I pay. And as the moment that I'm paid, I, the thought came to me, he didn't catch that. He didn't, he didn't ring those up. You just got 12 bucks. That's going on in my mind. Woo, you just got blessed. That's not a blessing. I'm like, where did that thought come from? And I'm taking my credit card back from him when all of these thoughts are going on in my mind. He didn't get it. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> You're thinking, Pastor, you actually had those kind of thoughts? They're not my thoughts. That's one thing I learned a long time ago. Not every thought in this old head up here comes from me. That's called the world. The world, man, the enemy was like, hey, look at that, man. You got 12 bucks. And it took me about three seconds. And I said, hey, did you get that? bottles of those cases of water you know i forgot oh man thanks for reminding me zing, zing, you know and i'm handing it to him and i'm thinking praise god man pass that test man <laughs> want to lose your integrity over 12 dollars? some people lose their integrity over two amen listen i want to be kingdom minded that's the difference see the world was like Woo, you just made $12 and it's not your fault. You didn't even have to steal it. Isn't that the thing? You, you told him. You actually told him. That's on him. You're not stealing. You could walk out and they could stop you. And you said, what? I told him. Didn't I tell him? Yeah, oh, it was my fault. You see, but kingdom minded says, no, we don't do that. Because the word of God says, let those who stole steal no more. Amen. Let those who committed adultery or sexual immorality, no longer do that. Let those who lie, no longer lie. You see, in the world, it's okay. Here's the world. The world teaches if you can get away with it, get away with it. But in the kingdom, no, I live up to the standard of God. So the scripture says, because we are now children of the king, you must walk worthy of your calling. Walk worthy of your calling. You're, you're a prince and a princess to the kingdom of heaven. You need to walk worthy of that calling. Amen. Don't pull some of those stunts that they do over there in England. Praise God. You got, you got Prince Charles. How many know he hasn't always lived up to being a prince? You know? There's people who, do, they, they, because they're human. And we make mistakes, but my goal is to do those things that please him. But see, here's the deal. The Lord says, I want you to be filled. You need to wait until you get filled with the Spirit. Peter, who had followed the Lord for three years, just 40 days earlier, he's there where Jesus has been arrested, and a young girl in the courtyard saying, aren't you one of his disciples? Let me ask you, what was Peter filled with in that courtyard? Fear. And when he's filled with fear, what does that cause him to do? To lie, to deceive, to be filled. I want you to think about that word for a moment, to be filled. When you are filled with something, it will always affect your emotions. When you get filled with something, it affects your emotions, which then affect your words and actions. This is why the world, it is constructed to fill people, to be filled with fear, to be filled with anger. You can't even hardly drive on the roads anymore 
without seeing people being filled with anger. It's, it's bad. I have to fight it myself. People are filled with lust. People are filled with jealousy. People are filled with confusion. People can be filled with all kinds of things. I want to give you some scriptures just about people being filled. Luke 4, 28. So all of those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. This is, wrath is not just anger. Wrath is anger on steroids. That's the person who jumps out of their car and shoots at somebody because you cut me off. How many have ever dealt with that? It's crazy. Pastor Donnie can tell you a story about, you know, somebody coming at him with some wrath. Amen? He had to lay hands on him. Praise God. In Jesus' name. The people in this world are filled with wrath. Listen to what it says in Luke 5, 26. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear. Now, they're, in, they're, they're seeing Jesus do something, and they get filled with fear. Do you know there are people who can be in church, and they can get filled with fear? They see people going to an altar and getting prayed over and the Holy Spirit moving in someone's life, and they're just like, oh, I ain't going up there. I'm not, not, you can't get me up there. I'm not doing, you know, filled with fear. I've seen it in people in church. God's trying to draw them and saying, I want to do something supernatural in your life. Amen. Nope, not doing it. How many have a fear of doctors? Don't like to go to the hospital. You know, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go to the hospital. You know, I, I'm telling you, man, I have to like need stitches or something to go. You know, I, it's got to be pretty bad. Praise God. I mean, I, I've had lots of pains and everything. I'm like, I know I got a fracture there. I should probably go have them work on that. Yeah, whatever. Amen. Yeah. Jesus' name, Lord, I just speak healing over it. <laughs> but see, we live in a world where people get filled with things. Listen to what else it says. It says in Luke 6, 11, but they were filled with rage and disgust with one another what they might do to Jesus. Amen. Rage what did it do? It caused an emotion upon them where they began to discuss how can we kill Jesus? What caused them to want to kill Jesus? Did they want to kill him for raising someone from the dead? Did they want to kill Jesus because of all the good deeds that he was doing? No. They wanted to kill Jesus because they were filled with rage. Rage, when you're filled with something, you'll always know that something is filling you when it begins to tr try to control you emotionally. Anytime your emotions begin to get out of control, you better recognize something's trying to fill me. Something's trying to fill me. And it's not the Spirit of God. Listen to what it says here. John 16, 6. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Sorrow. Acts 13, 45, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. Why did they oppose Paul? Because of envy. He got more crowds than we do. These, he got, he's better blessed than I am. Someone gets a new vehicle. Woo, you better watch out. You don't get filled with envy. Envy, jealousy. It's amazing how people, even in church, can get filled with jealousy. God, somebody comes into church and starts serving the Lord. They get involved in a ministry team. And people are like, hmm, what, what, are, they, what, what are they in that ministry for? Jealousy. Your emotions are being ruled by a spirit. You see, when I talk about jealousy, fear, rage, envy, these are spirits of the world. Acts 19, 29, so the whole city was filled with confusion. This is actually a spirit of confusion is what's in the world today. This, is, this would describe the world today, confused beyond 
reason. Confused about God, confused about uh, 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 what it means to be a Christian, confused about uh, 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 sexuality, confused about the government and its place and my place. People are confused about all kinds of things. Confusion is a spirit. And when you are confused and you're filled with confusion, you will, get, you, you will, you will feel something that will make you make wrong decisions. People make wrong decisions, wrong choices when they're filled with confusion. Now, if I stay here today and, I, and, and we look at these, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, amen, filled, we can be filled with fear, we can be filled with wrath, anger, jealousy, uh, uh, sorrow, confusion, envy, if I said, how many today would like to come up here to the front of the altar, and I can pray over you so that you can be filled with confusion. How many would like to come to be filled with fear today? Amen. We want to pray over you. I mean, nobody would be coming up. You'd be like, I ain't coming back to that church. That guy's weird, man. Like, really, you want me to go up there so I can get filled with confusion? Right? But you know what? The world says to you all the time, listen to us. Watch this. We will fill you with confusion, anger, sorrow, jealousy. But it's all, you know, wrapped in lights and stories and on your phone and everything else. You see, if you don't guard your eyes and your ears, this is the door and the window to your soul. And even though you may be a child of the king, even though you are a citizen of heaven, even though we are ambassadors and priests of the Lord Most High, and we can receive everything from the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, even though He's conveyed us and transferred us into this kingdom of God, because you and I still live on this earth, we can choose to open our doors and our windows to our soul and let the world fill us, let the world fill us with whatever it's given. I can tell you, to be filled with lust is a dangerous, dangerous spirit. Because lust leads people into some of the greatest sins of all. Do you know the Bible talks about sexual immorality? Sexual immorality. You say, well, what is that? Any sexuality outside of marriage between a man and a woman. God says in the beginning, I created them male and female. And I want you to have dominion. But see, sexuality is probably the sin of our generation. And it's a sin, the Bible says, that can lead to death, which is eternity without Christ. Anger can also do that. There are things that I, we live in this world and we got to guard. In fact, Solomon wrote in Proverbs, he says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. I need to guard what I get filled with. You start watching something. I was watching a TV show not too long ago, and I just had to to turn it off. I'm like, no, I ain't watching this. Why? Because I could sense what it was filling me with. You ever notice that? You start watching something? You want to get filled with darkness, witchcraft, Go ahead, watch, watch all the, 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 the uh, horror movies out there. It will fill you with something, I promise you. It, it will. There's no doubt. Your eyes and your ears are the door and window to your soul, amen, and you've got to guard what you fill yourself with. That's why daily you need to be in the Word of God. That's why daily we need to be in worship. That's why daily we need to come and seek the Lord and be filled with the Spirit today. Here's the mistake many people make. make. I went to the altar, 1983, amen, I'm talking about myself, and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I speak in tongues, and I still speak in tongues today, but you know, I can be filled with the Holy Spirit back then, I can still have the gift of tongues today, but do you know, I can now choose to get filled with other things? If I open my soul, I can get filled with jealousy, hatred, anger, fear, when, when the whole COVID thing came out, I can remember when I had to fight fear. 
You know, you watch everybody's talking about it. It's on every channel. It's on everything, on Facebook and Instagram and everything, and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and, and, and I could feel fear wanting to get in me. And I rebuked it. I said, God, you did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. So what happened was I had to, to choose, am I going to be worldly-minded or am I going to be kingdom-minded? And I decided in the kingdom there's no fear. Because perfect love cast out all fear. How many know that in the kingdom there's no lust? You're not going to find lust in the kingdom. In the world you do. Now the problem is we're in the world and we live in this world. So the, Jesus gave the example. The night that he instituted the Lord's Supper, he sat down and he washed their feet and their hands. Remember that? He says, so he's, and Peter finally, you know, he comes up to Peter, and Peter says, no, Lord, you, you're not going to wash me. You know, he's, he, Peter's always saying stupid things. And, and, and Jesus says, well, if I don't wash you, you have no part of me. Then wash everything, wash my head and everything. And then Jesus says, if I wash your hands and your feet, you're clean. Just be quiet, Peter. Shh. <laughs> I could, I'm sure Jesus felt like doing that a time or two, like zip it. Peter, amen. <laughs> what does he mean by that? When you walk in the world in the ancient times, we wore, they wore sandals. And so as they walked, the dust got on their feet. Their feet got dirty. Their hands got dirty as they were handling things. So as you and I walk in the world and live in the world, you get a little dirty. But you have to wash daily. Listen, if you're not washing daily, you're going to start stinking. And Jesus says, let me wash you. And so that's why in the Lord's Prayer we pray daily, Lord, forgive us our sins, our debts, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive me today, Lord God. What am I doing? I'm washing, in a sense, I'm spiritually washing my feet and my hands, saying, Lord, cleanse me. The rest of me is clean because the blood of Christ has cleansed me. But as I walk through this world, I, the world wants to feel me. I ain't getting filled. You may get some dust on my feet. You may get, you know, a few thoughts, battles up here, but I'm getting cleansed again. That's why it says we get cleansed by the washing of the Word. First thing I do in the morning, man, I'm opening up my Bible app or opening up my Bible. I got to get the Word. Lord, fill me. I want to be kingdom-minded. The last thing I like to do before I go to bed is read a scripture. Why? I want to go to bed kingdom-minded. I am not going to be on social media the last thing before I go to bed. I want to be kingdom-minded. And so we want to be filled with the Spirit. We have this promise to receive and to be filled with the Spirit, I want to close. We're going to pray. Acts 2, 38 and 39. Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you, to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. This promise is to us. And in closing, I want you to think about this. What does it really mean to be filled with the Spirit? If you've been around Christianity much or if you've been around Pentecostalism a little bit, the enemy will try to make you fearful of being filled with the Spirit because you may have seen people who have fallen down. You may have seen people who are shaking. You may see people speaking in tongues, crying, wailing, weeping. Listen, Holy Spirit, he works on people, and they get emotional. A lot of it's because they're being cleansed, they're being healed, their things are, 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 are lifting off of them. Have you ever seen somebody win on the price is right? I, they, they just, I mean, they, they win, you know, oh, you just won $10,000 or whatever it was. And, ah, ah, you know, they're going, ah, ah. I've seen people, I mean, like, man. Did they just get filled with the Holy Ghost? <laughs> they just got filled with some joy, man. That's what joy does, right? When people get filled with the Holy Spirit, it can touch them 
in different ways. There's no one way. Some people think I've not been filled with the Holy Spirit because I didn't shake, fall over, you know, start, you know, tongues didn't just come rolling out of me. You wouldn't know how you're filled with the Spirit or not. What is your emotion and mind on most of the time? Is it on God? Is it on the things of God? Because the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. And when you're filled with the Spirit, your mind will be on the things of God. You know you have the Holy Spirit when you have the power to say no to the world. If you're having a struggle saying no to the world, no to sin, no to the, to the ways of the world, if you're having a struggle with that, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to get filled with the Spirit because you can be a Christian and not be filled with the Spirit. There are what they call, Paul dealt with this, and he says, you're carnal, fleshly. They a carnal Christian. They are a believer in God. They don't yet believe like him, but they believe what the world says. And they keep filling themselves with the world. And he says, this is dangerous because that worldliness can actually cause you to lose your faith. Carnal Christianity is a dangerous thing. It's where you believe in God, but you believe like the world. You believe in God, but you believe what the world is spewing. It's dangerous. That's why the Scripture says, work out your salvation, your own salvation with fear and trembling. We need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Your hunger should be, God, I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want my mind and my emotions to be dictated and controlled by the Spirit of God because I'm a child of the King. I believe in the kingdom. I want what's in the kingdom of God. I want joy. I want peace. I want grace. I want favor. Amen. I want healing. I want uh, power. I want anointing. I want clarity of mind. Sound thinking. You've not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love. And sound thinking, a sound mind. Lord, that's what I want. And so if you want that today, if you say, Lord, I want to be filled. And what I mean by that is you may have had an experience in the past where you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You even speak in tongues, amen. But you feel like, man, my mind and my emotions are just being pulled in different directions a lot. I want to be filled more with the Spirit. I'll give you one last scriptural example of this. It happened uh, in Acts chapter 4 and 3 and 4 where the disciples on J Acts chapter 2, they get baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit, speak in tongues. Acts chapter 3, they get arrested. They get threatened with prison and worse. And they became a little fearful. So they go back to the body of Christ and they said, let's pray. We just came out of, you know, the courtroom with the same people who crucified Jesus, and they're threatening us. And they prayed this prayer, Lord, grant unto your servants that we may speak your word with all boldness by stretching forth your hand to do signs and wonders. And it says, and they were all filled with the Spirit. I thought, well, didn't they just get filled in chapter 2? They got filled again. Why? Because fear was trying to fill them. They were, fear was trying to get on them. Fear which was going to say, you don't do what God told you to do. But they said, no, we recognize we're battling fear. What do we need? Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. They got filled, and it says, and they spoke the word with boldness. You see what happens? See, a lot of times we think being filled with the Holy Spirit is a one-moment event. No, it's a lifetime event. You can keep coming back to the river. You can keep coming back, amen, to the anointing. And you can say, Lord, I need some more. Lord, I need more. I'm battling this. I'm fighting this in the world. And God will fill you again and afresh. And you will not be controlled by the things of this world. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Amen. First and foremost, listen, if you're here today. And you want Jesus in your life. You say, I do. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and he was raised from the dead. And if you're willing to confess that to him and repent of your sins, the Bible says you shall be born again. You see, it's believing and repenting. Many people leave out the repentance, which is a turning, a turning from sin. If you're here today 
You say, Pastor Allen, I believe in Jesus and I want to pray and ask him to forgive me for my sins. I want to pray for you. I want to believe God to transform your life. How many right now, if you're here, and you say, that's me, just lift up your hand real quickly and you can put it right back down. God sees this hand, this hand, anyone else. Just put it up, put it right back down. Amen. God bless you. Maybe you've struggled in your faith. You've believed, you believed, you believed, but you haven't yet been changed. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old things pass away. The old worldly ways pass, and you get the new godly ways. If you're still living in the old worldly ways, you need to come and repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. God sees his hand. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? I want to be changed. I believe in Christ, but now I want to repent and ask him to come into my heart and change me. Oh, he loves you so much. He loves you. He loves you. He knows the battles you've gone through. He knows the, the things that have come against you and has tried to mold and shape you. But greater is the Lord, our God, who is in us than all of the spirits of hell that are in this world. There's others today, Christians, amen, you want to be filled fresh with the Holy Spirit. We're going to stand in just a moment. We're going to open the altar. If you lifted your hands to make a uh, to repent and be saved, I encourage you, come out of your seat and pray and ask Christ into your heart and repent of your sin. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, come down here today and get under the anointing. Amen. And say, Lord, I'm going to get under the spout. Uh, amen. That you would fill me afresh, Lord God. And God will fill you. You may have to cast out some things. You need to say, Lord, I recognize in me a spirit of fear. I recognize in me a spirit of jealousy. I recognize in me a spirit of anger, or maybe it's something else, amen, a spirit of lust. But you got to say, Lord, I don't want that in me anymore. I don't want to be filled with lust. I don't want to be filled with anger or fear or confusion or jealousy. And you know what? You confess that and you rebuke it and say, fill me with your spirit. And I guarantee you the Holy Ghost will fill you. Let's stand. And as we stand, this altar is open. Let's come and let's seek the Lord while he may be found. Let's draw near unto the Lord and he will draw near unto us. Amen. If you lift your hands amen please come and find a place to pray and seek the Lord and ask him for forgiveness give your heart completely to the Lord this morning in Jesus name hallelujah Lord I just ask uh, my uh, the pastors uh, amen and, and any of our life group leaders you can feel free to pray and lay hands upon these at the altar